Hello folks, Phil Gallagher aka Thraben Yu here for another Pioneer video. Today we are going to be playing with Nine-Headed Hydra's uh, essentially vampire show-and-tell deck. So let's start with the exciting show-and-tell side. Soren Imperious Bloodlord is a pretty respectable card in Pioneer in my opinion, like the ability to give a creature death touch and lifelink until the end of turn as well as stack up counters on them if they are vampires is pretty good. And you can sacrifice a vampire to uh, essentially like Lightning Helix something, which is respectable. We care about the minus three mode today, which for minus three, we can put a vampire creature card from our hand onto the battlefield. And lo and behold, we have a seven mana vampire demon noble. It's a six six with three abilities. There's a lot of words here. So when it ETBs, your opponent discards half of their cards. When it attacks, they mill half of their library. And when it dies, they sacrifice half of their non-land permanents. So this is a pretty big creature with a couple of relevant abilities. And the fact that this might get bumped, buffed by any other vampire-like tribal things that you have going on means that it can be pretty strong. So most of the rest of the supporting cast of this deck is going to be essentially a vampire aggro deck with some controlling elements. We have controlling elements like Thoughtseize to attack the hand and cards like Fatal Push or Heartless Act to go and attack your uh, like your opponent's creatures instead. Oh, and apologies, I've been trying to do this preview panel thing instead. Um, now, as far as the deck design goes, I'm skeptical of how many colors this deck is. So, for example, Blood, Blood Baron of Viscopa is an incredibly powerful vampire, uh, saw a decent amount of standard play back in the day, uh, like it was pretty good there, saw a little fringe modern play back in the day, uh, and is like a really cool casual staple. But we're also trying to play that alongside a couple of Grixis cards. And I'm kind of wondering, like, how much of the time are we going to have trouble casting some of these cards? And I'm not really going to think too much about casting this. Like, it might happen sometimes when the game drags on, but um, I'm not really going to count on that. I expect to cheat that in most of the time. Now, admittedly, like, we do have a tribal land. Uh, we, we essentially have, like, a mana confluence type card for our vampire spells, and that helps. And we can also technically use this to make blood tokens. Um, but I kind of wonder if the juice is worth the squeeze on this one. So when this thing ETBs, you exile a creature card from a graveyard, and if you do that, you look at the top three cards of your library, you put one of the cards into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. So like, is a 3-3 that frequently, not always, draws a card and is on the right tribe, like, is that better than just playing some other vampire that's like in mono black to make your mana base smoother and then not worry so much about like hard casting this? Um, I don't know without playing the deck. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pop out the sideboard here now real quick. So one of the things that stands out to me with the sideboard is that there's a bunch of kind of overlapping but slightly different cards here. We have a couple more Ray of Enfeeblements in the sideboard. We have a Feed the Swarm, which can also answer enchantments when we need to, as well as Power Word Kill. And we also have some things like Culligan's Command that can be flexible removal, as well as six pieces of Graveyard Hate in the form of Go Blank and Leyline of the Void. Um... I'm excited to try out this deck. Like, we have a card that makes little vampire nighthawks. Um, well, okay, I guess, like, technically they don't death touch, so, like, almost vampire nighthawks. Um, and, and I'm excited to give this a go. Um, let's go ahead and jump directly into the league. My Pioneer content did not do well in terms of analytics the last couple of times, so if you enjoyed this comment, this content, please consider leaving me a comment or a like to kind of push along this content and con continue to incentivize me to, uh, keep playing Pioneer, because I enjoy the format. It's a lot of fun. All right, let's battle. Okay, um, I would like a third land with this hand. I have a decent number of early game cards and i can cheat in a blood baron early if i draw a third land i think this is going to be a keep i am not sure sequencing on thought seize versus just playing the knight in the dark i think i'm gonna thought seize i think i'm gonna thought seize i'm not 100 percent sure on that okay um so we are playing against a devotion deck i think i'm just gonna take the thing that produces the largest number of devotion pips here 
I'm not really going to cut my opponent off of mana. Like, they have three different things that accelerate their mana in hand. So, like, if I can't truly attack from that angle and really cut them off of it, I'd rather just do something that hurts them in a different direction. A heartless act. Okay. This is the difference between them dumping all of their mana onto the battlefield this turn and not. I can try to save this for a real card, but it's a pretty good tempo play here to just nuke this creature. Um, I really do need to hit this next land drop on curve, though. All right, there's that. And there's the Haven. Um, so just in case you're not super familiar with this, this is going to let my opponent tap this for an extra mana. All right, um, I have a whiffed on my land drop here, um, which is unfortunate. Not the end of the world, but like, Definitely falling a little behind. Okay, yeah, Mystic is fine. I can kill that if I need to. And now my opponent has a lot of Devotion Pips, as well as a just relevantly sized creature. All right, uh, let's start with a Thought Seize. Hopefully just rip one important card out of my opponent's hands. Yeah, I mean, that'll do. And now is this a Knight or a Fatal Push? I think it's a Fatal Push. Then I'll just hold this back, I guess. Um, yeah, def definitely on the wrong side of the matchup currently. Like, I, I know my, my one of my opponent's cards in hand is not great, so I have that going for me, but I'm not super happy with my board state. I'm, I'm just stuck. Um, I, will, I will go ahead and trade bodies here. The Old Growth Troll does have a trigger on death that allows it to enchant a land, so I'm not really gaining a lot in terms of uh, taking the Devotion Pips out of play. I'm just answering a 4-4 four four here. And how good was your draw for turn? Okay, it's just a Boseju. Uh, okay. I mean, that's that's turn. Um, yeah, I do not want to be giving my opponent time here. See if my opponent wants to sacrifice this. Okay, that's just more mana. That's good for now. Okay. And this thing attacking isn't even all that good either right now. My opponent could just, like, pay 5 mana, make a 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. Alright. Let's just call it a turn here. I will Heartless Act a 4-4 four four if my opponent makes it. I don't think I Heartless Act a 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, opponent's not willing to pull the trigger yet. And I'm trying to save this for a decent-sized creature, rather than just pick off an Elvish Mystic. That's fine. Oh, is this Sorcery Speed only? Okay, that is Sorcery Speed only. That's fine. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think I fire off this Heartless Act. Okay, cool. So, Shock, Thorin, Baby Show and Tell, Blood Baron. So if I can get to 30 or more life, this starts to get cute. Um, I'm not going to get there immediately, but it's something that's realistic, this game. Okay, is it is it time for my opponent to draw something big and broken? I've dodged until turn 7. Yeah, okay. Then again, I missed my land, my third land drop until turn 7, so, you know. Uh, oh, 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 God, what does this one do? Get some plus 1, plus 1 counters, they get trample... Target creature deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker or tutor a creature. Okay. Life's bad. Getting a god pharaoh statue. Okay. And there's some plus one, plus one counters. So this thing has flashback, which is not great for me. The timing on this is comic. All right. So I can sacrifice a vampire, deal three damage to something. I could use that to kill a Karn. I turn this into a 5-5 five, five and go for some sort of weird double block scenario. Artless Act destroys a creature with no plus one plus one counters on it, notably. So that's awkward. Alright. Oh my god, this is protection from white and black, so I can't actually put counters on that. Oh, that's some shit. That's some shit. I think Vivian's a problem. And I think I'm probably going to post-combat junk this thing to get rid of the Karn. 
I'll just kind of see how my opponent deals with this. Okay, they are going for a chump block. That's fine. All right. So let's sacrifice a vampire. Sacrifice this. Three damage on the Karn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. Nothing here is super terrifying in terms of like Storm the Festival being flashback. This card is just quite good though. I'm hoping I can use Heartless Act in a meaningful way. All right, that is just the God Pharaoh statue. Spells are about to become very expensive. So I think I will just use this opportunity to snipe an Elvish Mystic while this is still relevant. Um, the God Pharaoh statue taxing me like this is really rough, especially since um, Elvish Mystic is about to kill this creature. Yeah, there's a counter from Vivian. Goodbye, sweet prince. And then I bleed a little at the end step. One, one feels bad. Doesn't produce white. Need to hard cast that at some point. And then you cost too much to activate currently. I guess I am hacking this planeswalker? Question mark, question mark, question mark. I'm just kind of hoping opponent draws a little poorly. Like, with multiple of these things in play, maybe I can do something meaningful at some point, but, like, attacking the Vivian there means that opponent can't just use this minus ability to have Elvish Mystic fight. That is a Kiora. Okay, they're going for a Troll. That gives them a card. Shoot. And then they get plus one, plus one counters. Yeah, I am, uh... My... my my big finisher is now worse than Elvish Mystic on board. That's uh not great. And then that's an untap from Kiora. Alright, so I'm at five mana. I can't actually play this card. Part of my concern earlier. I think I need to take some cards here and try to work towards something. Um that's something, but I think I'm really starting to feel the repercussions of miss missing those land drops early on. Like, I just did not have time to capitalize and pull far enough ahead that I could just do something meaningful. Um, I think at this point I'm comfortable conceding. My my opponent is just, like, very much outclassing what I'm doing, and my spells are taxed. Okay, what is the plan for answering this deck? Kill them early is probably the answer. Kill multiple mana dorks early. Keep them from doing their big thing and cheat something in with Soren. That's probably the plan. What does this Soren do? Top card of library. Vampire Nighthawk. 13 damage. I don't think I want to be grinding like that. I think I just want more removal spells. This one can hit enchantments too. Yeah. So maybe let's try to board in four removal spells. Feel like I don't really need to grind here. Yeah, maybe we go these out, these in. This card didn't feel super impressive here, but that might just because I was be because I was stuck on mana. I think I'm probably okay to go down on one of those. I don't know. I uh, removal spells are good. Fatties are good. This card is good. Um, I don't love this hand. This hand isn't conceptually where I want it to be in terms of a hand, but I th think I'm just going to keep it because getting stuck on lands was just a major problem last time around. I don't know. Like, I might just objectively be wrong for not mulliganing this one. Just feels like so many of my draws are just very good, though. And I did board in more removal to try to knock my opponent off balance. Or, or we can draw a land. That's, that's cool, too. Uh, let's play a dork. I do really like this card, um, just generally speaking. I've been very happy with it, um, in assorted formats. I've even played this in Legacy a couple of times. Don't like that my opponent has access to that. Okay, sure. And there's more. Okay, okay, sure. I don't have anything like a board wipe here. 
All right, is it better for me to just play this Sora in this turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on my creature for any reason? Uh, honestly, I don't really think so. Yeah, it doesn't really seem like it. All right, Junk and Elf. Crash in for a couple points of damage. Um, I, I, I do need to draw relevant cards, though. My issue... Oh, God. Um, my issue is that there's worlds where something big can slip in this turn before I do anything relevant, which I'm not super keen on. Okay, yeah, that's exactly what I was afraid of. Okay. I kind of suspect that I'm dead here. Like, combo potential of flashing that stuff back aside. Just drawing lands like this has kind of left me on empty. Uh, we're going to move on to the next round. Like, I'm just about to get cracked by multiple creatures here. Um, I drew multiple lands after keeping a land heavy hand. Uh, maybe I should have just mulliganed that one. GG's. All right. Um, I think I will keep this opening hand um, operating under the assumption that I draw some playable cards. Like, this should bridge me to this. My hand is not doing anything that is objectively broken in any way, and it might do a lot of damage to myself, seeing as I have four shock lands, but like without having seen this deck very like in action for very many games yet, I don't have a great feel for what I should be doing. Another shock land is uh, rough. Uh, does this make white? No, that makes Grixis. All right, so let's shock and play a critter here. Okay, there's some more life. Okay, there, there's there's some life gain that'll. This not only gives me a bridge to this in terms of every oh god and my opponent just happened to have that card on top of their deck which means we could get grease fanged uh just like very very quickly so another shock land uh it's basically a bingo all right i'll take my one point of damage and then let's drop maybe one of these drop one of these in play seems like a nope Oh no, it's a faithful mending. Oh, there's another one in graveyard. Um, yeah. So like the consider hitting that was lucky, but the faithful mending would have got them there anyway. Um, yeah, and I basically lose the game on the spot to this combo. So in case you're not familiar with this, at the beginning of combat on your turn, you can return target vehicle from your graveyard to the battlefield, and it gains haste. So then you crew it with this. This thing attacks in for five. That also creates two 4 4 angels that are attacking. So I am at four life. My opponent bounces that to hand. They can do this again next turn. And you only exile creature cards, so I can't get the other one from you. I'm also just dead in the air. All right. Um, lost that one on turn four. Yeah. All right. So a ray of enfeeblement kills white creatures, right? Yeah. So I guess I can use these things to kill that. I, I guess this is just, like, try to avoid dying to the combo no matter what. This... Do I go Leyline Deep? i probably go Leyline Deep. i probably sideboard, like, a bajillion cards. It's really awkward to do this when, like, that enables my opponent discarding the... What is it? Panhelion? Parhelion? Parhelion? So there's that. Revolt seems a little tough for Fatal Push. I might junk that. And you kind of feel like a weak link. So this can give me six pieces of graveyard hate, and then I can consider adjusting the amount of removal in my deck. Do I need to junk murderous rider for something that is just faster, even though this isn't a win condition? Or even though one of these wouldn't be a win condition? Probably. Ray of Enfeeblement seems good. I'd like both of those in the deck. This also just like mills them for so much. Uh, it's so, it's, uh, he'll board out like one champion of dusk and keep these. I don't, I don't know. Okay. Um, this does something with the graveyards. A non-token creature and opponent controls would die. No. So this has a couple of redraws, but no interaction. And I have ley lines I'd kind of like. I think I'm just going to mulligan this one. Uh, this is fine. I will keep this. Not pitching a land. Kalatas is a much better card than the knight. The knight comes down on turn one. I'm going to take the card that comes down on turn one. 
don't know to what extent my opponent has answers to Leyline. I don't know my opponent's sideboard or their sideboarding plans at all. But we'll see what they got. Okay. Um, thought Seize means I'm kind of running on empty already. Uh, that can go into play tapped. I'll crash in for one. Um, in good news, like, the knight can be a mana sink for a few turns if I need to. Okay, there's something else to do with my mana. Um, I think I can just attack with a 1-2. I don't think my opponent has flash creatures, but I don't know the deck list for sure. I've only played against this deck like once. Go 2 mana for Gifted Aetherborn. A Tainted Indulgence. That's fine. So, like, this is not going to give my opponent the value that they necessarily want. And we can go ahead and do that. Tapped. I guess at this point I should refresh myself on how much this costs. Alright, five, but costs one less for each vampire I control. So that's already at least partially online. Ledger Shredder. Oh, that card seems really good here. Yeah. Okay. Alright, um, let's start with the Zealot. I'm fine doing that pre-combat, but I might actually not want to play a second spell if I draw one because it grows Ledger Shredder. Yeah, that's awkward. Um, I guess first I'll see if my opponent blocks. So, like, that's a thing. I can just wait a turn. Or I can grow this thing. Well, maybe grow this thing is more accurate. I think since my creatures just have Death Touch anyway, I'm fine with doing this. Okay, my opponent junked and opt to grow it. I think that's fine since I've already cut off, like, the removal angle of my opponent's deck. Let's go ahead and play this. See what I get out of it. It's a knight. I'll crash in with my death touchers specifically. Oh, it is the wandering emperor. That's good. Planeswalkers with flash are silly. All right, you get to exile one of my creatures. All right, you're at 12, and now do I want to play this creature? I only lost two life this turn. This is this is just awkward. Like, I'm going to have two death touchy things that can just attack next turn, so I don't really feel bad about giving that plus one, plus one counters, but it's just giving my opponent value. All right, we're seeing some movement. Okay, it is just a Grease Fang, which is totally fine. Consider is not really all that threatening with a Ley Line in play. And I assume... Well, maybe I can't assume which one my opponent is going to use the plus on. Okay, on the Grease Fang. Would have been a decent time to draw some removal. I think this is an instance of just send the team. I don't, I don't want my opponent getting rid of my creatures on this board. This is like wasting some potential damage. That's yeah, fine. I like, I gave, I gave up two tapped two twos for an opposing Planeswalker. That's okay with me. Uh, but I don't really feel like I'm necessarily favored here. Okay, opponent has, like, a very good pivot plan here. Like, Mentor and Shredder work very well together. Let's yield to a whole bunch of triggers. Yeah. I, I don't feel like my deck is doing enough for this format. Like, both rounds so far, I feel like I've just kind of gotten rolled by an objectively more powerful deck. Like, I don't feel like I'm a strong enough aggro deck to just, like, beat down my opponents before they execute their plan, and I don't feel like I'm a disruptive enough deck to control everything they're doing, uh, which is leaving me in this very awkward middle ground. Um, that kind of is what it is. Uh, yeah, I think I'm donezo here. Like, this is a little bit of graveyard hate. It has menace. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think I'm coming back from this one, folks. GG's. Uh, I'm so very unsure about what I'm supposed to be looking for in an opening hand. Um, I guess I'm going to keep this and hope Fatal Push is good. Like, if I play Fatal Push into a Planeswalker into this, like, I feel okay about that. Ginger Brute. Okay, um, that's a little unexpected. So I guess I am Fatal Pushing that. I'll just play the backside of this land this turn. Feels like I can wait to fatal push that in case 
some other hasty idiot comes into play. Ghostfire Blade. Costs two less if it targets a colorless creature. Sure. An opponent will pay to equip that. And we'll just go ahead and give it the old push. All right. So do I need to Heartless Act in this turn cycle? I do a decent portion of portion of the time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play the front side of this so that I have access to black black cards and call it a turn. I don't exactly know what my opponent is doing. It feels like some sort of like pseudo affinity strategy. Yeah. <laughs> This removes exactly three plus one plus one counters, right? Yeah. Use target creature. One, two, three. Done. Ball. Okay. So let's play Jock Thorin minus. I think I just play the champion now. So I can just play Kalitas next turn. Yeah, I've already made my land drop. Okay. This is respectable. Like, I've, I've disrupted my opponent's aggro deck multiple turns in a row, and then I can just, like, plus this, gain five life on my turn while also playing this. Yeah. Feels like I'm in a good position. What is this? App target permanent. Absolutely. In soul artifact. Okay. Scissors. Scissors are legit. Okay. So when do I use this is, I guess, my current question. Next turn, plus gain five life. Play this this turn, hold back some of the smaller stuff. Seems fine. Yeah. Four mana. And I do that pre-combat so that chump blocks become worse for my opponent. Okay. Good stuff. Okay, that's that's a quick concession. Um, Colligan's Command is going to be great here. Um, Feed the Swarm seems medium. Hourward Kill seems like it's the right types. Raven Feeblement is medium. It'll be fine against some things like Ginger Brute, but my opponent can have some equipment and things like the Scissors that this isn't just going to work on well. Murderous Rider feels a little slow to me as a removal spell, but it can kill things with five toughness easily in a way that something like Ray of Enfeeblement wouldn't. Maybe I need to respect my life total by not thought seizing, but it feels like picking apart a major piece of my opponent's hands, like a pair, pair of scissors or something, is very good. I think I'm just going to board these out for these three and call that okay. Like Ray of Enfeeblement, Duress seem playable, Feed the Swarm seems playable. Uh, let's try something like this. Oh, uh, the backside of this is red mana, right? Yeah, backside of that's red mana. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep this. Call against command is really strong here. And let's see what my opponent has to offer. Oh, Bomat Courier makes a lot of sense. So my opponent can whack me for one. Probably just thought seize them immediately. Let's do it. See what I can pick apart here. Is this five damage? Five damage. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take the scissors, I think. It's tempting to let the scissors hit me for five and then just, like, try to get a two-for-one with power word kill, but that just, like, very much seems like the best card in my opponent's hand. I don't think I'm going to fuck around with it. All right, there's that. Oh, it's another Bomat Courier. So they get Bomat Courier and Ginger Brute. Okay, yeah. Thorin's cool. I'm not quite ready for it. I think while my opponent is tapped out, I'm just going to power word kill this Bomat Courier. All right. Backside of this. Power word kill. Next turn, I can kill two of my opponent's creatures with a Culligan's Command. Or at least try to. Like, my opponent might still have Shrapnel Blast up. Okay. Um, a lot. Also, a lot is the fact that I have to shock myself here. It's happening. Uh, yes. Culligan's Command. For a target artifact, two damage to any target. For a target artifact... Two damage to any target. I'm fine with doing it with this timing. Because if my opponent wants to shrapnel blast me, I'm like, if they want to discard their hand with Bomat Courier, they lose shrapnel blast, which seems to be a very good card to me. Uh, five damage. Five damage. Six life. All right, you are going tapped. 
think I just play this. I can consider instead Soren immediately minus put this in, and then without using any mana next turn, I can plus on this. Uh, but I don't really feel super, super great about that. Um, let's get this going, or at least attempt to. Plus on the Gifted Aetherborn. Okay, looks like it's working. Um, this hit is kind of a huge deal, because it puts me out of just, like, immediate range of just eating it to Shrapnel Blast, plus literal any other source of damage. Okay, Shrapnel Blast is online here. Uh, I don't know what this is. Enters the battlefield, target artifact you control becomes an artifact creature with base power 5-5 five, five for as long as this is on the battlefield. That's indestructible. Oh, it has summoning sickness, though. Okay. Then I can work with this, especially with Soren's ability. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't have blue mana yet. I can show and tell this. I can also Soren plus sacrifice, shoot this, get rid of Darksteel Citadel that way. Uh, which I guess is what I'm doing. All right. Sack of Vampire. Goodbye. Junk the skilled animator. Play Castle Locked Wayne, which I don't think I am going to activate. Like, I know my opponent's one card is Shrapnel Blast. Like, I very much want to respect my own life total here. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is seven. I can just play this and immediately put a counter on it. That seems reasonable. I guess that means I don't attack with this this turn. And I'm not holding up Fatal Push. Uh, I can sacrifice this. Nah, that doesn't seem good. Let's just, uh, let's just grow my vampire. I kind of suspect this is the point where we've got this one. All right. So we're on the scoreboard. Uh, deck felt quite real this game, or this match rather. All right, um, round four opening hand is awkward in that uh, it's essentially a six card hand because like I have this in no Soren. It it plays dork into dork and has a couple of pieces of early disruption. Maybe this is fine. I don't know. Like drawing a Soren is good. Drawing lands are good. Um, I think I'm going to start like this in hopes of... Oh no, I can't actually Fatal Push and Thought Seize next turn, because this isn't a true black land. Alright. We are playing against some sort of red nonsense deck. I would like to use all my mana if possible. Do not know if it is going to be possible to play multiple spells effectively in later turns, but I think I'm okay with this. And I'm just going to hold my creature back. I think if I win this game, I win this game by a lot, not by a little bit. Um, I really want untapped black sources so I can do multiple Fatal Push or Fatal Push plus Thoughtseize in the same turn cycle. I think that's very much the plan. Oh, this deck is going to be super low to the ground. All right. We have weathered the, we have weathered the turn. And now... I don't have the experience to know whether or not I'm supposed to thought seize or fatal push. I like fatal pushing this a lot. I think I'm just going to do that before my opponent can cast anything meaningful. Back? Back seems okay. Hold this back. I maybe take a little bit of damage for doing that. I don't know how safe I can be. All right, what is this? You cast a spell that targets it, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Enters the battlefield. Target creature can't block this turn. Okay, that's very strong. Sticky fingers. Menace, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, make a token. Sure. Okay, that was a lot of damage. Uh, that's not what I'm looking for right now. I need to just use my mana to fatal push this. And... Oh, and when enchanted creature dies, draw a card. That is a lot of text. All right, let's hold back and see what happens here. I'm kind of hoping... All right, so when this enters the battlefield, target creature can't block this turn. So this is probably my moment to just end that creature. You get another card pre-combat, uh, which is something I was trying to avoid, but it is what it is. 
All right, a Swift Spear. Sure. So basically every removal spell in my deck comes in. Okay, there's more mana. I think I, j I, think I need to work on getting deeper. So I am going to lose the life to do that. That's fantastic. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to Thought Seize. Eh, yeah, that was a risk. I accept it, and I'm not going to attack. But if that was something my opponent was sandbagging to try and, like, push lethal through in one turn, I would have been very glad to have taken it. This fire breathing. Yeah, it's fine. All right. Gives a creature menace. And fire breathing plus menace together is definitely cute. So this is three incoming damage. It's plus one plus O. Oh. It requires two blockers. So I think I'm going to go like, yeah, yeah, and then send this in front of that. And I can just kind of be content with mostly leaving a cleared board, and then I just play a 6-6 six, six and then turn it into a giant life linker. I think that's going to be fine most of the time. All right, show and tell time. I'm for the broken stuff. Minus, Xander. Unfortunately, that rounds down, so opponent doesn't actually discard a card here. Um, but I imagine if I connect for 7 lifelink damage and go back up to 17, that there's just no recovering from that. Oh my gosh, it's the Abbot. I haven't seen that card in play in forever. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good source of card advantage in a deck with just so many single red cost cards. Okay, that's a sticky fingers, sure. Uh, that's actually really annoying because that menace means my opponent can just attack and kill the Soren. Yeah. Uh, unfortunate for me. So I can attack and make my opponent mill half their library. That doesn't really do a ton for me. Uh, I'm in danger of dying. Also unsure whether or not I should shock. I'm going to err on the side of no kind of hoping that if this game goes long, I will find the lifelink necessary to kind of go and get through. In a lot of worlds, I'm blocking this thing with Menace with both my creatures anyway. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Do my blocks. And yeah, I just kind of assume opponent is trying to get that out of the way and is just willing to sacrifice a creature in order to do so. They get to draw a card off the Sticky Fingers anyway. All right. It was not a live card that they wanted to play this turn. Sitting back does not favor me when my opponent has so many evasion things and the ability to go wide of me. But I can't really see myself attacking in this position. All right, are you attacking? Or are we just going to stare at each other for a couple turns? Okay, it's go time. I just kind of assume I block the best threat each time. Just kind of see what my opponent has to say about it. If my opponent expends a whole bunch of resources in the middle of combat here, trying to kill my creature, right, you lightning strike me. Um, in which case, I will just go ahead and kill the abbot and then not lose my creature in combat. Take two. All right, do I attack this turn? I still kind of feel like I need to drag this game on. I don't think I can cast Thought Seize either. I just, I just think I'm on the faster clock if I attack, just given, yeah, given how many low to ground, the ground things my opponent has. So my dude can't block this turn, meaning I'm taking five. Not great. Uh, need something with lifelink here. Hey, it's something with lifelink. Absolutely, we'll take that. And just absolutely have to keep sitting here. And then hopefully I draw a Soren, give this lifelink, crash in for seven, and stabilize this game. I wonder how many lands my opponent's deck has. Probably like 15 or something crazy like that. All right, that's not good for me. All right, so I'll take out the big one. I take two. I'm at two. Okay, so I play the back side of this or red. Uh, I'm I'm dead to so many cards here, including my own Thoughtseize. All right, that's a land. Come on, lifelink shit. Uh, that's a watery grave. That'll be tapped. 
And we're waiting. This is a deck that I really want to win game one against as well. All right. I'm going to click on nothing here and see if my opponent goes for the kill or if they wait, they go for the kill. All right. GG. Um, losing that game's real bad for me. So removal, 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 removal. Your life gain by probably board you in. Culligan's command is like technically also removal. Thoughtseize feels incredibly slow to me here. I think I'm going to cut that. That gets me four more removal spells as a starting point. I absolutely want this. I think K command and duress are both playable. Though I don't think either is nuts. So just cut Corpse Appraiser like I've been doing in most rounds. 3-3s are respectable blockers. Maybe Champion of Dusk's life loss is a bit much on a board that I actually build up. Maybe do like Soren and 1k command, or maybe do something like this. Uh, the k command mode of bringing back a like bringing back one of my creatures to my hand is like totally reasonable as well. This is okay. I won't give it any better than okay, but I think this is a keep. These don't always trade with creatures, which I dislike. So let's go backside of this knight. Like that as a 1 2 means that a hasty 1 1 isn't getting in for damage this turn. Although, honestly, I expect something like that from my opponent most of the time. I think I am going to just go ahead and shock this turn and work towards land drop 3. It feels like land drop 3 is just incredibly important here. Like, uh, ooh, young Pyromancer. That's very good. That's very cute. Uh, yeah, I'll absolutely do a trade there. That's A-OK -okay with me. That is a lot of Soren. I don't think I let this get out of control. I think I will shock. A command. Maybe discard a card. And do damage to the young Pyromancer. And I can start doing Soren nonsense. Okay, I got a Dragon Mantle. Um, I think I'm just going to hold this back in case my opponent has a Haste Creature. Like, with this many Sorens, I just want to try to keep a creature alive if possible. Okay, yeah, take your uh, take your land drop. And there's a Crusader, that's fine. Ooh, yeah, I think I'll wait a turn on the Soren. This, this combination just seems too good to pass up. I probably end up fatal pushing an Abbot. Or damage to target creature. If it would die, exile it instead. Absolutely. The exiling means I don't get to bring it back with a K command later. Fine. I will go ahead and push you. All right, opponent has one card left. Yes, okay. This is closer to what I was hoping for last game. All right, minus. Get this. They don't actually discard a card. I'll hold these back. And now I've got two creatures back this time, so even a menace thing isn't causing my opponent to be able to kill the Sorin. And even if they do kill the Sorin, I just, like, play another plus it, crash in for seven, and then, like, I can stay aggressive with Xander for the rest of the game. Is two damage to any target? No, two damage to target opponent. Okay, yeah, opponent's just gonna huck that at my face. Okay. Always tapped Watery Grave. I wonder if I just kill the Akruan Crusader. And play a new Soren. Yeah, I actually think I like that. Sacrifice that to Lightning Helix. Play new Soren. Keep this Soren. Plus Life Link. Seven damage. Mill you for half your library. Uh, I can do a quick glance to see if anything super crazy sticks out here. Target creature can't block this turn. Okay. So mostly more of what I saw last game. Lava Coil seems new. Um, on the draw, I don't hate Duress. because I'm a little worse at answering early creatures. This gives me more early plays, which I think I like better when I'm on the draw. Like, I don't mind the 3-3 three, three blocker. Uh, 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 no. No, I'm not willing to risk it. My strategy is very reliant on getting to Soren. This I keep... I'm going to junk the Murderous Rider. I think the Murderous Rider is a better card than Soren in this hand, but I think Soren plays towards more lines that actually win me the game. All right, so 
play this. Arrest my opponent. Okay, they're keeping on the strength of a young Pyromancer. The Menace here is a problem. The Dragon Mantle is pretty good too, but I think the Menace is more of a problem. All right. Um, I have a lot of removal in my deck, assuming I draw some amount of it. I am in very good shape. I would prefer to draw it just like right the fuck now. Um, did not hit. I get a redraw. Another Soren isn't great. Absolutely wishing I had the uh, Murderous Rider as of right now. It's okay. Uh, Swift Spear is good. Dragon Mantle on it is great. I'm not really in a position to block that. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to let that through. And I probably Soren minus and use this to junk one of the two creatures. Or I do that. So that's really strong. I think I just do that. All right. Thorin minus beat that creature into play. I don't think I'm going to get cheeky and try to attack for one. Again, I think if I win this, I win by miles, not inches. Unsure which creature I would kill if I need to kill one. All right, this is just Soren being attacked. I think I just let that go. Yeah, goodbye. Okay, what does this Soren do? Jump blockers are potentially a problem in the future, as is just like this creature with the Dragon Mantle that I'm not great with blocking. Very unsure on this decision. I'm plussing, I'm sacrificing a vampire, sacrificing this. The Dragon Mantled creature is more of a problem on current board. I have so many removal spells that kill that. I'm gonna I'm gonna eat the thing that keeps them that makes them go wide. There's a lightning strike on my creature. See if they have another removal spell. It may just be keeping me from attacking this turn and gaining four life, and that is like valuable enough for them. Um, let's go tapped blood crypt here. All at a turn. See if they have another lightning strike type card as their last card in hand. Yeah, they do not. So they essentially paid two mana to stop me from gaining four life and to make an elemental. Dragon Mantle is totally respectable here. Uh, opponent flooding out is uh, actually not bad with double Dragon Mantle. Are both of these coming at me? Are both of these coming at Soren? Both are going at Soren. I think I just deal. And I just kind of hope to... Uh, Draw some cards that do something meaningful. How much does this attack for again? 3-3. Three, three. I can attack back. I can crack back for 7 while gaining some life. Oh, that's uh, that's a better plan. We'll just do that. Uh, crash in for 4. Go to 22. Play this. Play that. Now I've made... A, like... The all-out attacks are pretty awkward from my opponent. We may end up in a bit of a standstill situation until they get something like that. Yeah, um, but... Wow, still more mountains. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to let you hit me. And then I'm just going to crash in for the lifelink back. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Do, do your fire breathing. That hits me for 8. I gain 6 back on the crack back. Like, I very much wonder whether or not opponent should be attacking there. All right, um, I think I'm going to go land, dude, just immediately activate this ability, sacrifice this, go for my plus one, plus one counters on this, and crack back on my opponent for nine. Um, I do very much wonder if my opponent should have been holding these back and trying to just keep me from attacking. It's like, it's more awkward for them this turn than it was last turn. Okay, so this has Menace, right? With Menace. If my opponent wants to block, it costs them both of their blockers. And these things just have one toughness. Yeah, they just have one toughness. Is that just my play? Yeah, that might just be my play. No life on that. Activate that for four mana. Oh, they've got a Lightning Strike for it. Sure. Yeah, I think I'll just chill. I think this board favors me by a lot. I don't think I need to aggressively trade these creatures with my opponent's stuff. When I just have, I don't know, 10 plus removal spells in the deck. 
just so difficult for my opponent to attack here. Okay, I'm fucking wrong. Yeah, I probably just take that hit and hit and then crack back. Yeah, sure. Yeah, pun is just uh doing one point of damage, getting a treasure out of it. That's fine. That's also fine. Now I can probably attack with both of these. I think blue on the back now. I think I'm gonna play this. Draw a card with Castle Locked Wayne. See where that takes me. Takes me to another Xander. Uh, I can cast that next turn. Confirming that I know the text of this, yeah. I think I'm good with cracking in with both of those creatures. Now my opponent will activate Fire Breathing approximately a billion times. Oh, and taking a chump. Yeah, that's all fine. Yep. Yeah. In paper, you just get to say, I activate this six times. Magic Online, not quite the same. Okay, and there I do get my zombie token since one of my opponent's creatures died. The next turn, I'll cast a Xander. My opponent's got one creature. Oh, sick. I am also at 30 or more life, so this is now a 10-10 flyer. That's about to not be the case again, but it is currently the case. The opponent has to, like, attack with that in order to knock me below 30 life, but then they take 6 on the crackback. I guess they could also activate Ramunap Ruins. Like, that's another way they could do it. I am at exactly 30 life currently. This doesn't have a sorcery speed restriction, does it? No. This game has been really interesting. Alright. It is apparently prowess time. The zombie can't block. It couldn't block anyway, but that's fine. Like, now all the cards are on the table. Ooh. An opponent is not holding back. Or rather, opponent is holding back. So, their plan is activate Ramunap to make my life total go down. Is this a zombie or vampire? Yeah. Is it just totally fine for me to attack with Blood Baron anyway and just trade it with Monastery Swift Spear? My opponent doesn't have anything that increases its toughness at all. Yeah, that seems fine. Alright, send with both. Yep, so there's the Ramunap Ruins activation. Returning that to a 4-4. Four -four. Which is totally fine. I'll take my 2 damage, gain my 4 life, my opponent loses, like, this creature, the enchantments on it, and a treasure token. That's the wrong color. That's the right color. Alright, tradesies. Oh my gosh, because I, I gained the life um, before the combat damage is processed and state base effects are checked. Uh, that didn't actually work the way that my opponent wanted it to. Uh, which is fantastic for me. Yeah, that's a that's a Tarmogoyf situation where the damage is dealt, and then after damage is dealt, state-based effects are checked. Yeah, not not used to playing the Tarmogoyf game with Blood Baron of Viscopa. What a match! That one probably gets to be the recommended match of this league. All right, final round. I feel like I need a land, and if I get a land. This hand has a pretty hot curve of Thoughtseize into Aetherborn into Soren Blood Baron. And I like that a lot. Alright, opponent took one mulligan. Let's get this show on the road. And bleed myself just to death a little bit. Just a little... Woof. Okay. Well. I'm gonna take the middle Thoughtseize here. An unconventional play. A lot of, a lot of players just go for the, the closest Thoughtseize to you. No. Assert your dominance. So I don't know exactly what opponent's deck is is doing uh, in terms of strategy, but it feels like they're relatively disruptive. But like this is something you probably wouldn't put in your control deck, right? So I expect my opponent to be drawing more aggressive elements. I just yeah, I just assume you take the gifted Etherborn this turn and then go for the Sauron the next turn. Um, multiple Thoughtseize effects absolutely picks apart my hand. Um, also, missing a land drop here is real bad because it gives my opponents, uh, yeah, yikes, gives my opponents thought seizes more time to be good. So, for example, like now they're they they can use another thought seize type effect, take a murderous rider. Um, but I, I guess that's the third one actually because I took one out of their hand. But like the same logic holds true. Um, Blood Baron's probably pretty 
disgusting in this matchup, assuming I can get to the point where I hard cast them. All right, this is uh, this is five cards in hand, no playables. Uh, I might get buried by my opponent's castle locked Wayne here. Uh, this is embarrassing. Yeah, so there's there's the first activation. Oh, that's a that's a pair of spirit tokens. My fatal push uh, doesn't exactly look good against that. Fatal push a token. I really don't want to fatal push a token. Yeah, let's uh let's fatal push that. Goodbye. I'll take my two. I don't care about these tokens as long as I draw lands. Not attacking. That is very strange to me. Uh, maybe there's something I don't understand here. Uh, I am happy with that draw. However, like, holy shit, I need lands. Eh. Bye, Soren. It's also the four Thoughtseize, just for those of you keeping track on your fingers at home. And that's a Bone Crusher, I think. Yeah. The alternate art Bone Crusher. Um, yep, like, very unhappy with the timing of that draw. Like, opponent knows I have Murderous Rider. So if I don't play this out as a life linker, my opponent can just, like, not crush, cast Bone Crusher Giant. I think I play this out as a life linker awkwardly, because I, like, given how much, like, mana I have not used by missing land drops, I don't think I can put myself in a situation where I just don't use three mana. I just use everything I can to try to make it to these Blood Barons. All right, what do you got? All right, it's the Bone Crusher. Uh, Fatal Push is a thing that exists. Uh, again, this not being castable here is pretty huge. All right, no, no nonsense first main phase. Now this is happening. I can just block, gain two life, fatal push it post combat. Not a feel good play. Might just be where I'm at. I'm not happy with it. Like I used my mana so my opponent couldn't play around my effect and like give me a time walk, but now that's costing me a card for doing so. Alright, there's my life. Loop that back into the library, although that probably won't be relevant. Table of the Mirror Breaker. And yeah, I think I just need to take the larger creature out of play. Uh, again, not happy about the current situation, though, because that just cost me some life from the trigger, and I just have so many uncastable cards right now. Ugh. Hate that I have to shock here. Black. Red. And we can send a Bone Crusher Giant out of Graveyard to get some selection here. All right, this land gets me to Blood Barons in the following turns. So the second stage of this is a loot effect, so my opponent can discard up to two if they do draw that many, and then they get kind of a much weakened Kiki Cheeky. Okay, sure. I mean, I will absolutely block, soaking up every single point of damage matters here. And that's a stomp into a Bone Crusher, and they are using the treasure for it. So there's land into Blood Baron, but I think this is going to be too slow. So my opponent is going to get this, like, Kiki-Jiki effect. They're going to make a copy of Bone Crusher Giant and just, like, send it in. And that's not good news for me. It starts with Summoning Sickness. So, like, I will have a turn window where I can try to stop that nonsense by top decking something. I will absolutely fucking block this Bone Crusher Giant if my opponent attacks with it this turn so that they can't copy it next turn. Oh, yeah, they're offering that trade. Uh, absolutely. That makes this reflection so much less threatening to me. Uh, what's this? Eh, eh. So, since my opponent very specifically has of those now this or this is protection from black okay so that's not actually a real problem all right so there's a blood baron there's a knight ah these are three twos though those are big all right something oh god um that's not good for me so my opponent can activate the blood tithe harvester get a zombie out of that uh, yeah, this, 
This is not great for me. So I think I have to play this card. I think there's a lot of worlds where my opponent doesn't let me draw two. All right, I'm wrong. Apt Watery Grave. I think I'm probably dead on board. I haven't mathed it out, but it feels like I'm dead. If I assume my opponent like activates this, kills this, or maybe makes a copy of this, activates that copy. Yeah. Okay, so there's the copy, which gives them a blood token. Then they sack this one to kill that. Yeah. Knight also gives them a zombie. And they turn everything sideways. I guess I'm not dead, right? I block this three, four, five, six, seven, plus I gain four. Yeah, okay. So I'm not dead, but it's very hard for me to build up a meaningful board until I kill this creature. My opponent has a castle locked wing that they can access. Oh god, just another one. Uh yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So this is actually pretty respectable, right? Because if this thing dies, my opponent sacrifices half the permanents, or the non-land permanents they control, rather. Like, that's that's very real. Okay, opponent junked a Blood Crypt for a new card. All right, what is it copying? All right, it's copying the Harvester. Are you immediately going to kill Xander? All right. Oh, no. Fucking Kalitas is a replacement effect, not a trigger. So that doesn't actually work. Life is awful. I hate everything. Huh. All right, am I dead this turn? Walk, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Not quite this turn. Probably die next turn. Also, like, Kalitas can junk some zombies and grow at some point. All right, uh, I'm, I'm fighting the uphill battle here. I'm going to go ahead and concede. Yeah, I just, I just got stuck. Opponent's deck is pretty slow to get going. They have a pretty neat engine come later in the game, though. I don't think I want to attack my opponent with this card. I think I want some amount of stuff that can keep up with their grinding. Like, I imagine myself winning a lot of times by doing one of these things with Sorin and having it stick, like, backed up with some removal. Take a new Sorin to grind and destroy an enchantment, which is... A respectable effect to have. You also can just get creatures. How do I feel about go blank? Like an actual source of card advantage. Okay. Hardwood kills okay. Colgan's commands okay. Like more for getting my stuff back than anything else. Um, let's do that. Murderous mm -hmm. Rider is value, but it's slow. I might just want to like adjust my curve a little bit. I probably want to play one of these on three most of the time. Let's try this. All right, I have a Soren, a Xander, and the ability to cast my stuff. Um, this is a keep. Right, let's play backside of this. Play a knight. Hope I don't get thought seized in the first two turns. Thought seize is effectively a two for one, and honestly, it is going to feel like a six for one. It will just be so good. Like that effect is just so powerful versus the hand that I currently have. Bash for one, and. Uh, Hope not to get discarded, because my hand's very good if I don't get, get discarded, and very bad if I do. Yeah. Goodbye, Soren. That's, uh... That's rough. Okay. Um, I don't... feel like I have to play Watery Grave. Untapped this turn. I'm just gonna play the backside of this. Throw my creature crash in for four and take my plus one plus one counter on my duder um wow third haunted ridge third one noticeably better than the first two though i was waiting to pay costs on something okay it is a croxa um i probably just discard this dead card in my hand i will immediately draw a sauron next turn since i chose that line that's how that goes and a fatal push as follow-up is quite good all right, shock into my vampire boy. Opponent doesn't have enough cards in graveyard for escaping this. Although that's something that plays well with their whole, uh, whatchamacallit, um, fable of the mirror breaker type card. All right, absolutely just push that. 
play castle locked Wayne. Do I sacrifice this zombie immediately and grow my creature? I think I'm good with that. I just want this out of range of smaller removal spells. The like five points of lifelink also is fuck me is also like absolutely relevant. If opponent had fatal push, didn't they have like fired? Oh no, they needed the revolt. Never mind. Yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about with feeding Kroxa as well. All right, so I play this. I am potentially power word killing this token. Although a lot of that depends on uh, what opponent does with Fable. All right, what is this? XL target creature and opponent controls mana value two or less and all other creatures. Same name. Sure. That's fine. All right. Do I want to give my opponent a treasure? Flash. Do I want to get this card out of my hand so I don't lose life with Castle Locked, Wayne? The answer is probably yes. All right, junk that. Leaves me without an active answer to the Kroxa, which I don't like. I don't love that either. I just play this past the turn and activate Castle Locked, Wayne, on my opponent's end step. There's some worlds where they try to make me discard, and I get punished for having cards in the wrong zone. All right, looks like they're going for the blood token. Oh, wow, that is a powerful card to discard. Is it worth doing that to just, like, bring back Kroxa that quickly? I mean, opponent obviously thinks so. All right. I'll go ahead and just take a card here. Blood Baron is a almost respectable draw, but again, I don't have the mana to cast it, despite how many lands I have. Um, and it's very possible I lose the game for not being able to cast this card yeah oh that sucks all right activate this again dig a little deeper doesn't quite work here and now this croxa is going to attack make me discard a card uh, and leave me in a bad situation this den gets to attack yeah okay uh, how much am I taking here? A billion. Uh, I think this is uh, the end of this league. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye, Blood Baron. I go to negative one here. Uh, and we end up with a 2-3 in the league. Um, overall thoughts on the deck list. Medium minus. When the deck does its thing, it is cool and good, but I do not feel like this deck does its thing consistently enough to be competitive with some of the other combo decks of the format. Um, so, like, in terms of deck building, this is like a three Knight of the Ebon Legion deck, which is super weird, right? So I'm not, like, hyper-aggressive and, like, hyper-full of removal to the point where I can just, like, force this through and can continue to lean in on this. Like, I'm not even wanting to play four of them. I'm playing it because it's a vampire. And, like, I am a four-color deck where, like, not being able to cast one of these critical cards is super important. So I also think I boarded this out every round out of mana base concerns. And there aren't actually that many white sources for this outside of the estate. Um, well, like, there are other things like the Godless Shrines as well. Um, but I feel like this deck is in so many colors that you end up having to play a lot of shock lands. Like, we're on Blood Crypts and Godless Shrines and Watery Graves. And I think being on all those things while playing Castle Locked Wayne and other things like the, the Zealots and the Champion of Dusks that cause us to lose life, um, kind of puts us, uh, fighting from the back, like, fighting on the back foot versus a lot of decks. Um, so if I were going to play this again, I'd cut the Corpse Appraisers, I'd run two more Blood Barons, I'd change the mana base to make it so that I'm less likely to be able to cast this, but more likely to be able to cast this. So in the games where I just don't have, like, Soren to immediately dump things into play, I feel like I have a decent backup plan. I don't know the Vampire suite of Pioneer well enough to know what I could replace Corpse Appraiser with lower on the curve. Um, but I also kind of feel like I'd want to cut Murderous Rider for just, like, not being on Tribe. Um, it being a 3-mana removal spell and then, like, a 3-mana creature as well means it's fighting against one of your most important slots on Curve, um, which I think is, like, a real deal. Um, I don't feel badly about the deck, and I, like, enjoyed playing it, but I don't think this one has, like, the competitive snuff to it.
Anyway, folks, I hope you en you enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button. It's really important on these Pioneer videos as uh, I am new to the format, and that means like I don't have an established viewer base for this format yet. And uh, I hope you all have a great rest of the day. See ya!